Greetings, fellow seekers of wisdom. Today we embark on a journey right into liberation theology, a fusion of faith, Marxism, and social justice. Liberation theology emerged in the 20th century as a response to societal injustices. Let's dive deep into its roots. Picture Latin America in the 60s and 70s. It was a region marked by poverty, inequality and political unrest. The church, traditionally conservative, however started to grapple with its role in addressing these societal challenges. It was Vatican II that sparked a shift, urging the church to engage in the world's challenges. This led to the formulation of liberation theology as a response to the cries of the oppressed, the poor and the working class. It's a call for progressive social transformation. Now, let's dissect the core principles. At its foundation is the preferential option for the poor, meaning the commitment to prioritize the well-being of the marginalized. Liberation theology combines the structural analysis of society and praxis, encouraging believers to bridge social theory and social action. And this synthesis is not just theology, it's a dynamic force for change. But of course, liberation theology wouldn't be what it is without its trailblazers. Gustavo Gutierrez is the father of liberation theology, and he emphasized the need for solidarity with the poor. And then there's Archbishop Oscar Romero, the voice of the voiceless, martyred for his unwavering commitment to justice. So these figures ignited a theological revolution, inspiring countless others to join their cause. Now let's address the critiques because liberation theology hasn't escaped controversy. Some argue that it blurs the lines between theology and politics, potentially diluting spiritual purity. Fair point, it is a delicate balance navigating the realms of faith and activism. But fast forward to today, is liberation theology still relevant? Absolutely. From black theology in the US to movements in Asia and Africa, liberation theology continues to inspire new waves of activism. In conclusion, liberation theology is a testament to the power of faith to ignite social change. As we continue to navigate through this complex social world, let's remember the words of Gustavo Gutierrez. Theology should liberate, not domesticate. Stay enlightened, stay compassionate, until next time. Your sociologist, Sue. Hey. If you're interested in reading more about liberation theology, I can recommend two books. This one. Religion and Marxism. An introduction by Paul Francois Tremlett. And this one. Marxism, Religion, and Emancipatory Politics by Kirkpatrick, McMyler, and Fadi.